Hey, what's up everyone? John here with Web Dev for You, here to help you build awesome websites without code in Webflow. Uh, today we have a fun interaction. It's interaction number 161, and it's a menu trigger animation on click, and it also has a hover animation. So here when I hover, we can see that the bottom two lines kind of scale in, and then when I click, it turns into an X, and the left line also has a scale uh, hover interaction to it as well. Uh, and as we can see, the top line and the second line and the, and the third line all have different heights, which creates kind of a unique design and a unique interaction. So this was inspired off this website here, uh, venusstory.com, and they have this menu trigger here in the upper left, and that they have that design there. So I decided to recreate it. I thought it was pretty unique how this menu trigger worked, and it actually took me a moment to figure this out. Um, it's not as straightforward as I thought, and so I'm excited to share uh, the steps uh, involved in this interaction today. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'll go into Webflow. I have a blank project. I'll start with a section. Let's give this section a class name of 160, uh, 161 section. I'll give it a min height of 100 VH, and we'll set the flex setting to center, center. Next, I'll add the the uh, menu trigger wrapper. So I'll add a div block, and we'll call this 161 menu trigger wrapper. We'll give it a display setting of flex, center, center, and vertical, because we're going to stack the, the trigger lines on top of each other. And we'll set the width and height to 40 by 40. And I think that's it. That's all we need to do there. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and add the menu trigger lines. So I'll add a div block and we'll add, this will be 161 menu trigger line. We'll make the width 100%. We'll make the height four pixels for this first one. And we'll give it a small border radius of four pixels and we'll set the background color to black. All right, so we have the first menu trigger line. I'll go ahead and copy yeah, actually, we also want to set the position to relative relative here because we're going to add absolute position divs inside of here. So what's unique about this interaction is that in order to have the scale effect, we need to actually place absolute divs inside of the second, the second and third line. Um, and the reason is because the, sca the, the lines here are scaling from left to right so the transform origin is on the bottom left here or it's on the left but if we change the transform origin to the actual x we can't scale it from the left so it'll make sense in a second so this is it's a fun one it's a fun interaction so i'll hit command c to copy and we'll paste the second and third line here so let's go ahead and give some margin to the top and bottom of these li lines of four pixels and actually for the second and third line, we're going to set the uh, the color to transparent. So I'm going to give a combo class to the second line of two, and I'm going to set the background color here to transparent. And same for the third line, we're going to give it a combo class of three, and I'm going to set the background to transparent. Then inside of the second menu trigger line, I'm going to add a div block, and I'm going to call this 161 menu trigger inner. Yeah, menu trigger line in a kind of long class name, but that's all right. And we'll set the position to absolute and full. So it fills that menu trigger uh, parent element. And then to this element, we'll set the background color to, uh, to black. Okay, and we'll give it a border radius of four so it matches its parent element. And we'll do the same for the third menu trigger line. We'll add a div. Actually, what we can do is just copy this menu trigger line inner into the third one, and perfect. Uh, also, for the menu trigger line inner, we want to go to the 2D and 3D transforms, click on the three dots, and set the transform origin to the left because we're going to scale it from the left. It's going to shrink from the left. Okay? Cool. So, what we need to do here now is let me see if I can grab it. Yeah, I think that's basically it. So we have the, the line, so 
The first line, it doesn't have a menu trigger inner, but the second and third do. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, there's a bird outside, so <laughs> you can probably hear that. But yeah, let's go ahead and create the interaction now. Let me go ahead into my demo here just to see what I did. All right, cool. So let's see, rotate. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and create the interaction. So I'll select the menu trigger wrapper, go to interactions, click the plus, and I'll say I'll mouse click. On first click, we'll start an animation. I'll click the plus, and I'll say 161 uh, menu trigger first click. Okay, and for this, we wanna select the first menu trigger line, click the plus, we'll say move, and we're gonna move it down 10 pixels on the Y axis. And we're gonna say selected element and not class, so it just moves that first one. And let's see here. Oh, the other thing I didn't quite do. So these all have the same height. I wanna to go to the second one and give it a height of, the, the second menu trigger line, give it a height of two. And the first menu, the third menu trigger line, give it a height of one. And that gives us that varying height um, menu trigger. Okay, back to the interaction. And let's go to the menu trigger first click. So I'll move the first one down. Then I'll move the second menu trigger line. I'll move it up negative 10 pixels. And there's a bit of math there. So we have margins, four pixels of margin from the top and bottom. And each menu trigger is going to be converted to two pixels. So we move it 10 pixels so they go in the center. Um, but you can play around with that if you find that the center is off. Maybe just try moving it one, one or two pixels in either, either direction till the menu trigger is in the center. But with four pixels, essentially what I did is I added the eight pixels of margin on the top and bottom, and then added the two pixels of height, and that gives us 10 pixels. So I'm moving it down 10 pixels. It might actually be nine pixels, but 10 seems to work well. Um, so there we have it. So I'm moving the first and second line. So if I play, they collapse in on each other. And the next thing I want to do is grab the first menu trigger line. And for the size, I'm going to set it to two pixels in height. And I'll grab the third menu trigger line and I'm going to select size and change it to two pixels in height. So they converge together and then the size is changed to two pixels. And now for the second menu trigger line, I'll select it here. We're gonna set the opacity to 0% so we don't see it. So that middle line just disappears. I'll say selected element and we'll set the duration to zero. And then I'll rotate the first menu trigger line. I'll rotate it to 45 degrees on the Z axis. Z axis, yeah. And the, sec the third menu trigger line, I'll rotate it uh, here, negative 45 degrees on the Z axis. Okay, so now if I preview, the menu triggers collapse, they turn into two pixels, the first and third, and then they create an X. So again, click and perfect. All right, now I just need to work on the speed. So 0.5 seconds duration is okay. I'll just say ease for the easing and the rotation, I'll say ease. The opacity doesn't matter because it doesn't have any duration and we're just making the second line disappear. Perfect, so now I'll click save on this. Yeah, I'll click save. And then on second click, we'll start an animation. I'll duplicate this, click on 161 menu trigger, and I'll just call it menu trigger second click. And we just have to reverse everything here. So the first thing we wanna do is rotate. So I'll bring the rotation up to the top. We'll rotate it back to zero. And then we'll move the yeah we'll move the first menu trigger line back up to zero, and the second we'll move it back to zero, so they go back to the original position. The first menu trigger line is going to have a height of four, and the second is going to be a height of one. So we're just resetting everything back to the original state, and let's see here the opacity. I think we need to go here. And let's see, yeah, I think that's right. And then we wanna set the opacity of that middle one to 100%. So let's see how that looks. Perfect. 
and awesome. Oops, there we go. And we have that nice menu trigger. So now we just need to add the hover effect where the, the menu trigger scales on hover. So we'll close this, we'll select the menu trigger wrapper, we'll click the plus, I'll say on mouse hover, we'll start an animation, I'll click the plus and I'll say 161 menu trigger hover in, and I'll select the menu trigger line inner for the first one, or the second line, click the plus, I'll say scale, and we'll scale it initially to, on the X, so I'll unlock the X and Y, because we're just gonna move it on the X. I'll say 0.6 on the X, and we'll say, uh, yeah, selected element. And actually it can be class because it's inside the menu trigger wrapper, so that should be fine. And we'll set this as the initial state here. Okay, so let's preview just to make sure. And we can see that line is smaller. And I'm just gonna look at the demo real quick. Or actually, let me see here. Yeah, so we don't need to set it as the initial state. That's uh, my bad there. So let's uncheck set as initial state. But when we hover, it scales in. Okay, and it might have to be selected element. Okay, and then we'll go to men menu trigger line enter on this third line. We'll say scale and we'll scale this. Let's unlock the X and the Y and we'll scale it to 0.4 on the X. We'll say selected element and we'll start them together. And for the duration, let's change it to 0.3 and an easing of ease. Let's see how that looks. And let's say 0.3 for both of them and an easing of ease. All right, let me just double check that that's how it looks. Yep, perfect. So the first menu trigger line inner is scaling to 0.6 and the second to 0.4. And that's it. So I'll click save and then on hover out, we'll start an animation. We'll duplicate the hover in, select it, and I'll say menu trigger hover out. And then we'll just reset these back to one. So I'll select both and say one. So now I hover, click, and that's it. Looks good. Awesome. And let me just make sure that the menu trigger line inner have a border radius of four. Yep. Menu trigger line four. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So that's how we create that menu trigger. Now to create, a, have a full screen menu appear when, when it comes in and then change the color. That's actually a quick little thing that we can do. Um, and let me just make sure that I set the speed correctly for the hover in. And you trigger hover in. 0.3, yep, cool. And I wanna make sure I set the easing correctly because it seems a bit slow, but that could just be me. Nope, that's right. Cool, so yeah, let's create a full screen menu. So I'll add a div, I'll say um, 161 full screen, I'll just say 161 menu wrapper. Let's go ahead and set the section to a position of relative. So this menu wrapper fills the section. I'll say fixed and full. Let's give it a background color of, let's say, let's say kind of a grayish color so we can see the button still and let's bring the menu trigger. Let me see if I place it here. Yeah, okay, so I wanna place it at the top. Or I can set the menu trigger wrapper to relative as well, so it comes to the top and apply a Z index. But if I place the menu trigger below the menu wrapper, it'll be in the front. Uh, cool, so we have the menu trigger and let's go ahead and select it. Let's go into the interaction. Let's go into the mouse click. I'll click it here. I'll select the menu wrapper. I'll move it negative, 100% on the X axis, set it as the initial state. And then when the menu, yeah, then we wanna move the menu back to 0% and we'll set the easing to ease and a duration of 0.5 seconds is fine. So what happens when we click, the menu comes in, great. 
Now we just want to change the color of the menu trigger. So we'll select the menu trigger line and we'll set, set the color, the background color to uh, white. And we'll start it with the other ones. And then we'll select the menu trigger line inner and we'll change the background color to white as well. Okay, and I can select both of these and say ease for the easing. I think that should work, let's see. Yeah, perfect. So for the menu trigger line inner, because we're affecting both of them, we can say class here. Uh, so it's okay if the background color is set to class for the menu trigger line inner because they're yeah they're changing they're both changing to a color of white. So then on second click, we just need to move the menu wrapper with the rotation. So we're going to move it back to negative one hundred percent, and we're going to start it with the other ones. And then for these, we're going to uh, for the first menu trigger line, we're going to change the background color back to black. And then for the menu trigger line inner, we'll also change the background color back to black. Okay, and I'll start these with these ones. And let's see. Yeah, I think that's right. So back to black, and then we'll just say ease for the easing here and ease for the movement here. But let's see how that looks. So we can hover, changes to white. And yeah, so the background color needs to change with these here. Cool, that should work. Yep, white, and then back to black. All right, cool. And I can go ahead and change this to black here, at the background. We just won't see the menu trigger initially. So if I click, there we go. And if I click again, perfect. The last thing we need to do is select the menu trigger wrapper and add change the cursor to pointer so that so that the user knows they can click on it. So when I hover, we have the pointer and perfect. All right, so there's the menu trigger. So the main uh, takeaway from this is that in order to, to scale the menu uh, trigger line from the left, we need to place it inside of a parent element and then give the menu trigger line inner a 2D transform origin from the left, right? Because if I were to set the menu trigger line transform origin to the left, it, let's just do that real quick. We're gonna see what happens. The X gets all wonky because in order to make that X, the transform origin for the lines needs to be in the center. So by default, it's in the center. So if I just um, yeah, remove this transform origin. If I remove it, the default is in the center. So that's why we get an X because the lines, the, the main lines are transforming from the center, but the inner lines are scaling from the left. And that gives us that effect. So kind of a unique thing to kind of wrap your head around. You do need the inner inner lines to transform from the left, left but the, the parent lines need to transform from the center to create the X. And with that kind of idea, you can you can create a lot of unique animations and interactions in Webflow, uh, which I find really, really interesting. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that the parent line has a position of relative, and then you can set the inner line to a position of absolute and full, so it fills the parent element. Uh, but the, trigger, the parent trigger line does need to be set to relative so that the inner lines don't go outside the bounds of the parent line. All right, so those were a lot of words. Hopefully that was clear. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Uh, this interaction is clonable for free um, in the description area below. You can just copy and paste into your own project and you can also sign up for Webflow in the description area below. Uh, so thanks for watching. That is interaction number 161, the menu trigger line animation on click and on hover. Uh, yeah, so again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.